I was in a very deep state of depression to the point where I could not crawl out of bed in the morning. It was a very dark time in my life. Found myself homeless, staring down the barrel of my second divorce. I just have a whole lot of pain and hurt. It's no secret, I've, I've tried to commit suicide three times. Easy way out? I don't think so. I think it takes a lot of courage to pull that trigger. And in many ways, the fact that I couldn't, I feel like a coward. I had so much noise in my head. Everybody has a hidden agenda. Everybody's out to get me. I'm always being judged. It's almost like the wires to my feelings are not connected. I was homeless for six weeks, sleeping out of my car, going from one 24-hour fitness parking lot to the other so that I could use their showers. I had my little black SUV that I slept in the back of, and it's perfect, man. This little nook provided me a little bit of shelter, safety. I'm always on the run. And I create this role of isolation, loneliness. I was on my way to work at a stoplight with a flask in my center console. I had to, man. What else was I going to do? The, pa the pain needed to go away. I called my VA counselor, and I told him it was time. It was time for me to check myself in and get some help. And that was a very tough thing to do. I was gonna have to step down and give up my position of authority, my position of leadership, and it has had an impact on my career. I've been told by the VA I have manic depression. OK, now what? I'm desperate. At home, I have pills upon pills that the VA has given me. I've lost track of what pill is for what, when I'm supposed to take this pill, when I'm supposed to take that pill. I want to put the pills and the drugs aside and I want to be able to feel my feelings. Coming back from deployments, getting out of the Marine Corps, trying to transition into the civilian world, it's a struggle. It wasn't a job, it was a way of life. And now I live in a world where there's no teamwork. Everybody is about themselves. My whole family's military, Marine Corps. My dad's a retired mass sergeant. I guess I was raised to just do my time and serve my country, and that was that. Dad wasn't really around. Mom wasn't around. I was raised by my grandparents. After college, I went to officer's boot camp in Quantico. That's when my Marine Corps career started. When I say move, you say kill. Right on there. Move, kill! Boot camp, shared misery. Keep low profile, you don't get a bullet in the head. Oh, yeah, it sir. does not serve for us to be in touch with our feelings. There's no place for it. The only way you're gonna get through boot camp is as a team. 
and that's where the bond starts. As vets, we go through rite of passage. We go through boot camp, we do certain things, we rely on each other. We go to some really fucked up places and we have this bond. When I joined the Marine Corps, I found myself surrounded by other men who also had rough childhoods. And I think that that lends itself to creating this band of brothers of broken families, broken childhoods. And for once in our life, we have that sense of belonging, that sense of family that we didn't have. We are trained to kill another human being, which is not natural. Nobody else will ever understand what I went through unless you were there with me. I need to be in touch with my pain and be okay with it. I need to somehow figure out how to cry. And I have no idea how to get there. The Marine Corps didn't train me how to deal with that. I don't open up to just anybody and everybody. It's not easy for me. It's not natural. I need to be able to trust without thinking that there's some hidden agenda, without feeling like they're judging me. Why does it have to be me that needs to change? Everybody's so focused on Kalani needs to change. Kalani needs help. I don't need shit. I need to just be me. Come on, boy. Come on. This is my piece of heaven. I'm alone. Nobody's around me. Nobody's bothering me. It's just me and Bess. Sit. Stay. It's like I have zero capacity to deal with other people and their bullshit. My relationship with my girlfriend has been rocky. And just like a soda bottle, you shake that soda bottle up enough, eventually it'll blow. Sometimes Angela will ask me a simple question and then snap the fingers, it turns into this argument. And at that moment, I was so angry. I don't give a shit. I grabbed all of her stuff and threw her out of my house. And I felt myself home alone by myself. I s feel comfortable being alone. It's not necessarily what I want. I don't want to be an outsider. I want to be happy like everybody else. I don't know how. I don't fucking need your ass. I don't need anybody. I made it this far, all by myself. Now with you, where the fuck are you? Ah! Ah! I don't have time for this shit! Fucking leave me. Everybody else has. And I act like I got it all under control. Yeah. And I don't fucking have a clue what the fuck's going on, man. I'm building this plane as I'm flying it. Hell yeah. It wasn't until I started opening my mouth and admitting I had a problem. 
and seeking help. It wasn't easy. It's probably the toughest thing I've gone through. Probably tougher than going to boot camp. You know, I, I got a lot of stuff surfacing and um, I'm gonna say what I gotta say. I'm not comfortable sitting in a circle with a bunch of women. There's a large part of me that fucking hates women with a passion. These women just like leave me. My mom left me. My first wife, my second wife. What it amounts to is abandonment. So in terms of coming home after seven months and all you do is dream about coming home, I came home to a nightmare. When I came off the plane, all the Marines, they were greeted by their family members. But I looked around in the crowd and my family wasn't there. My wife wasn't there. My kids weren't there. And that's a moment that I can never, like, I can't redo that moment. She took that from me. And I hate myself for it. What I hear you saying is there is no place that you really belong. There is no place of people who are there for you, waiting for you to come home when you're gone and all that stuff. It's there, it just doesn't exist. For me, it's not a moment in time. My whole life is fucked up. Mm -hmm. My whole life. The other piece of work is just around this Marine that I never reached out to. Yeah. I was part of the collective leadership we had over 180 Marines under our charge. I was asked specifically to look after a Marine by his uncle, who was a first sergeant who worked for me. And sure enough, he shot himself. Don't know why. I've been told that I don't need to own that as my responsibility. Doesn't make me feel any better. While I was in Jordan, we were responsible for training the Jordanian army. I knew First Lieutenant Kasespa, he was a Jordanian pilot, was captured by ISIS and burned alive. Didn't think anything of it until we saw his face on the videos that were circulating on the internet to see a human being caged up and burned. I had the unfortunate opportunity to watch that video uncensored over and over and over and over. I don't sleep at night. Don? Yeah. I saw your tears. The gift for me in that moment was realizing how many women I hurt. How many women I have made cry. My two divorces, I deserved. Because I'm a fucking asshole. My current relationship, I'm a fucking asshole. I'm sorry for being a jerk. I'm 
sorry for being an asshole. I'm sorry for all those times that I was being a fucking dick <laughs> just because. It's way easier for me to be angry. I get angry because deep down inside I'm hurt. I get angry because deep down inside I'm in pain. And I don't like touching those feelings. Doesn't make it right. In fact, it's all excuses. I'm very sorry. I see your heart. It is beautiful. It is love. You have so much love in you. I understand you and I see you. You. What we do in the military is we put our life on the line for each other. We rely on each other. And there's where the camaraderie comes from. As I've matured through this work, I have realized this is just the start of the race. I went through everything that I went through, the endless nights out on the cold streets, spending so many nights in the VA psych ward, and then all of a sudden finding the power of talking and being open with other men through circle work. I went through all of that for a reason. to help other veterans. All right, this is my Sunday <laughs> meant to be, so here's half my swap yes. meat money to go towards what you're doing. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. So we just received a donation for what we're about to do. And this money here, you will watch on camera, it's gonna go to a homeless veteran. That's what this is about. Oftentimes, you walk right past a homeless person. I do it all the time. They're just all over the place. I can't help them all. My, my mission, my goal is to help the homeless veterans. We have a whole plethora of things that we do to help these homeless veterans, whether it be the free haircuts that we're giving today. We provide 24-7 crisis support. Hopefully, none of them have you know, any thoughts of hurting themselves, but if they do, they have my number. I'm going into the heart of the homeless population. They call it the jungle. It's typically, it's, it's East Village in downtown San Diego. This is raw. I, no permits, no nothing. They definitely don't like cameras, so this should be interesting. This is for you to cut on, man. I'm Marine, so. Those homeless vets, they'll listen to me. Helping them is helping myself. They're not damaged goods. There are men and women who signed on the dotted line knowing what that meant. They volunteered. That says a lot about them. What was your rank? E4. OK. They no longer have a mission. We somehow have to help that service member find their own mission. The, the overpass? No, I and with that, they now have a new purpose. OK. You going to go to stand I can't tell you how good it feels to know that I'm leaving my mission. And it wasn't a mission to serve my country. 
it's not a mission to make my dad happy and be a Marine. This is my mission. This is, this is what my book gets to be written about. There's so much healing power in helping others. All right, we'll get you a bus pass, OK? Can I buy an annual bus pass? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not sure. Of. Well, when your monthly bus pass is over, you're going to call me, and we'll get you another one, all right? OK. I just want one promise from you. Sure. With that monthly bus pass, you're going to come to my, my weekly meetings. I sure will. On Sundays, all right? Sure will. All right. I want to show other veterans that they can do this stuff, too. All right. I want to help them integrate back into the civilian world. Now they're not outsiders. Now they're not different. Now they have a much better chance of keeping it under control. I may not be serving my country anymore, but I am serving my community, and I can sleep well at night knowing that I'm making a difference. Thanks for coming through. No problem, no problem. When I came home is when I realized this is where I need to be. You ready for ASB? Okay. Put those dishes away. Daddy, maybe you should clean the counters. <laughs> They're smart little girls. I want them to know that they have somebody they can talk to and trust that I'm going to give them truthful answers. Did you actually mean it when you said, uh, the first guy we bring home to you, you're going to be cleaning your gun? <laughs> so you actually have a gun in this house? Choose wisely <laughs> who you bring home. I don't have a gun in this house because I don't trust myself. That's the real reason why I don't have a gun in this house. OK? We have weather protection. Like what? Or those like swords your up face. there. Yes. Or those swords up there. Yes, yes we've got <laughs> swords. And we've got a dog. <laughs> I think she heard me clearly that I don't have a gun in the house. What about you? But I don't think she knew what I meant when I said I don't have a gun in the house because I don't trust myself. I've had three suicidal attempts. I could only imagine if I had an actual tool to make it happen. I'm so focused on helping other people because I don't want to look at myself. Maybe all veterans would prefer to focus on others rather than themselves. And I get what it's doing to me. Nothing's gonna change, because that's being selfish. Hi, Lisa. This is Kalani with Camis and Canines. I'm looking at your email right now. I'm just totally moved at the fact that you're helping me with the booth fees. This really means a lot. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. My new sense of purpose in life keeps me pretty busy. This local Marine's dreams of owning a massive property may soon come true, but it's not for himself. Kalani Krutzberg, a Marine with PTSD, survived chilling deployments, but the fight for his life followed him home. Before I knew it, I was homeless. I call him Bass. We rescued him, but he's my best friend now. And he's always at my side. When I was going there to rescue him, he was actually the one rescuing me. Bass gave him a sense of purpose. Kalani's now on a mission to give homeless vets a home. He plans to buy this 300-acre property in Delzura. We're going to run our day-to-day -day operations very much like when we were back in the service. There will be structure. We will work together. We will eat together. They'll also rescue homeless dogs about to be euthanized. In order to keep their mission going, the pair are embarking on a 215-mile hike. It stretches from north of L.A. back to Delzura. <laughs> They hope their hike will also help raise funds for down payment on the ranch so that their journey can continue. Camions and canines, it's fulfilling because it's my mission, it's my purpose. Nate, Stephanie, and myself started it about 10, 11 days ago. I am about an hour and 30 minutes behind schedule. But we're all stepping it out, right? Yeah. There you go. 
Good job. It's gonna be all fun and games until I smoke check these folks. It's just another step along my journey. I finally put my mission into play. I could die right now knowing that I have lived my mission. I have no idea what tomorrow's gonna look like, and I'm okay with that. I know I'm not alone. Welcome home, everybody! Where I'm at in life now in this journey, I just wanna love and be loved, which really explains this whole camis and canines thing. This is me loving strangers the way that my seven-year-old boy needed to be loved. And instead of being a victim to it, I'm doing the best I can to turn it into something positive for our community, for this world, because that's who I am as a veteran. How do they expect a man to do the things that I have to come back and be the same? The things I've done that I regret, the things I've seen I won't forget for this life and so many more. And I'm trying to find my way home. The child inside me is long dead and gone, somewhere between. Lost and alone, trying to find my way home. And I've seen another side, another slice of the pie that didn't seem too fair to me. People who did not deserve the sufferings that they incurred, freedom ought to be free. I'm trying to find my way home The child inside me is long dead and gone Somewhere between lost and alone I'm trying to find my way home Expect a man to see the things that I have come back and be the same. 